Thank you, Simona. That was Simona Frankel, the solid rock. Uh, as you can see, our sanctuary is under construction. Uh, we are fixing all of the pla peeling plaster, repainting. Um, we are putting in a new sound and audiovisual system. We thought we would be able to open by Pentecost Sunday, May 23rd, but we were way too optimistic and the Holy Spirit had different ideas. So I just want to say that we will be opening for in-person worship by August, the very first Sunday in August. That's our goal, our hope. We've talked to our contractor who is doing this, uh, and they said that this could be done by that time. So we really hope that everybody will be able to join us. I'm um, going to put your attention to just some of the bulletin announcements. If you want to help us by uh, attending uh, any of our services or getting the bulletins, you can do so by contacting Debbie uh, at this uh, link on the screen, and we hope that you'll join us for that. And this Thursday, as always, we're doing our Bible study. Um, we're looking at Timothy Keller's book, From Fear to Hope. Um, and if you want to join us, you can just email me, and we'll be glad to have you join us. Also, I'll put up here the, the, the Zoom coffee hour. Dottie will be doing that. We've got a new link, and it should be working fine. So hopefully everybody will be able to do that. Um, also, I want to just put up here, uh, Dottie's just wishing everybody a happy guys to see you today. We had a great time yesterday with the Men's Fellowship here at uh, our house, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you more and more in person as we go on. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I can put this one on. It doesn't look like it will let me, honey. Um, wait a minute. Here we go. I got it. Here we go. All right. So there's the new meeting Zoom link. And just uh, if you need to, you can uh, uh, do that. All right. So at this point in our service, let me bring our attention to just a few of the things that we've got going on here. All right. So if you're writing a Spire article uh, for this coming month and for the summer, they're due on Monday, uh, June 17th to Debbie. So please uh, get those in if you want to. And then, uh, as I said, you can also email Debbie if you want to um, have any more information about anything that we're doing. What's that? What? Spire article, May 17th. I'm sorry. It's May 17th. That's right. Daddy just corrected me. May 17th. Sorry, folks. Um, so if you want to do that, that'd be great. Also, our thought for the day comes from Tony Campolo. He's a, a professor of religion at, uh, in Pennsylvania, and he wrote this. Jesus broke into our history not to demonstrate his power. Rather, he came to express his love for all of us. So at this time, please join with me in our call to worship as it is in our bulletins. We have come from our own places to this special and sacred time, made holy because we gather in the name of Jesus. This is a place where we know we can share community with our friends, even with strangers, and be blessed. It's a place that we can get to know each other and new people that enlighten and imagine our days for us. So let us sing a new song to the Lord, and let us praise the Lord. Our opening hymn comes from our choir. It's called The Solid Rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Nice job, choir. Great to hear them again. <clears throat> Our confession of sin comes this way to us. Somewhere, someone is kind 
when others are unkind. May you be that kind person. Somewhere someone shares with another who is in need. May you be that person who shares with someone in need. Somewhere someone refuses to hate while others offer hate. Be kind and gentle and be someone who offers that. Somewhere someone is patient and waits in love for us. You can be that someone. Somewhere someone returns good for evil and does not return violence with violence. You can be such a person. Somewhere someone serves another in love. Someone, somewhere, is calm in the storm of anxiety that surrounds us. And the question is, is that someone me? And the answer is, it can be. Please take a few moments to be in silence and in prayer with God. Amen. There is no shortage of good days. <clears throat> it is good lives that are hard to come by. Let us live lives that show that we are loved and forgiven by a power far greater than ourselves so that on that day, when we meet our Lord, we can hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Come inherit the kingdom that has been prepared for you. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Carl and uh, look forward to having Carl read the scriptures. Open our ears and open our hearts that in hearing your word, we may be drawn closer to one another and to you. Today's scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 6 through 19. Here Jesus is praying to God. I have manifested thy name to the men whom thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them to me, and they have kept thy word. Now they know that everything that thou hast given me is from thee, for I have given them the words which thou hast given me, and they have received them, and I know in truth that I came from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I am praying for them, I am not praying for the world, but for those whom thou hast given me, for they are thine. All mine are thine, all thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to thee. Holy Father, keep them in thy, in thy name, which thou hast given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in thy name, which thou hast given me. I have guarded them, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to thee, and these things I speak in the world, world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not pray that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth, thy word is truth. As thou didst send me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself, that they also may be consecrated in truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God, Carl. Beautiful, beautiful reading and beautiful day today to match it. <clears throat> today I want to reflect on a prayer that Jesus offered here. It's his final prayer for his disciples before his arrest, his abandonment by them, before his trial and final, his crucifixion. And hopefully to provide the beginning of an answer to the question, why do we pray? Because the phrase, our thoughts and prayers are with you, has come to be challenged recently in our society by many as being of little or no use for the perpetual injustice of racism and gun violence, not to mention the pandemic that has occupied our minds and hearts for now over a year. Phrases like take care, have a nice day, I'll be praying for you, can ring hollow if there is no action that accompanies our prayers. But the claim that thoughts and prayers are useless just throws the baby out with the spiritual bathwater, so to speak. Because Jesus knows that action and self-sacrifice will soon come for him and for us 
He has a, cre a cross that awaits him, just as we will be picking up our crosses throughout this lifetime. But prayer is therefore necessary before action is taken. And so he sends this gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of prayer to us that we use every single day as we breathe in and breathe out. Have you ever had somebody pray for you in a way that changed your life that you can look back on? I certainly have. This congregation has prayed for me as I've gone through major surgeries and have gone through all kinds of times of turmoil and depression. And I hope, and my hope for you is that you also will have that kind of experience because prayer is a powerful tool that works in so many ways. Whether you chalk it up to simple brain chemistry as some people do as an answer to why we get the things we ask for, or if you look at others in the medical profession who now are beginning to study the power of intercessory prayer, we can see that prayer that we do each and every week, whether it is in person or over the internet, works. It doesn't matter if it works in any, it doesn't matter because it works in any and all situations. Whether we believe in it or not, it does. In his book, Prayer is Good Medicine, physician Larry Dossie writes the following. The vast majority of us as human beings pray, and we believe our prayers are answered. We aren't holding our breath in anticipation of the results of the next double-blind study on prayer either. But when put to the test in actual experiments in hospitals and clinics and laboratories, prayer does have an effect in humans and in non-humans, even when the recipient of the prayer is unaware that the prayer is being offered on their behalf. And I would add, too, that I have prayed with my confirmands using the experiment of planting three different seeds in three different jars, giving them equal amounts of water and light. Over one, we prayed prayers of praise and thanksgiving for the life of the plant. Over one, we prayed curses and hoped that it would die. And over the other one, we ignored it. And do you know which two grew the tallest always? Either the one we prayed positive thoughts for or the one that we prayed negative thoughts for. Because prayer works. Apathy doesn't. Apathy actually destroys. But prayer works, even if it's an angry prayer at times. But it doesn't necessarily mean our prayer gets answered the way that we would always want. For example, God may hear our anger in our prayers and transform us rather than the person we are seeking to have transformed. We, therefore, who make up this particular congregation that joins us every week, have experienced this power of prayer, and not just when we pray for ourselves. We have seen the power of prayer when we pray for others. We have seen and heard of its power to heal and to transform us. We know, for example, from a small child who is a member of our congregation, who is a, a member uh, of, of Ellen LaDuke's family, actually, who fell off of a second floor balcony when this was a little baby, who suffered a severe brain trauma and thus emerged after a long coma from prayers that we offered on behalf of this child with little or no brain damage whatsoever. And this child to this day is, is doing everything a normal child would do at that age and stage in life. We have lifted up people who have been told that they have cancer, who are now cancer-free. We have lifted up people who have addictions, who now are addiction-free, people who have needed jobs and found out that those prayers were answered in a way that brought them the relief and the healing that they needed to live an abundant life. As disciples of Jesus the Christ, our prayers for others begin as we recognize that Jesus has first prayed for us. We are all the recipients of his prayer. Therefore, our prayers begin not with our words, but with our hearts. To pray is to long for a connection with something that's bigger than ourselves, something greater than ourselves. It is to recognize that you and I cannot face this world alone. It is to admit that you and I do not have all of the answers, all of the wisdom, all of the grace, or even all of the love, all of the care that we need to make it through this day or the days that yet lie ahead, unless we keep coming back to God and asking for the strength and the courage to face each new dawning day. To pray is not to convince God to do something for us. To pray is to change our hearts and our minds, to give our hearts and our minds over to God himself. Prayer is the act of bending our lives towards God's intention for our lives, which is guided by the Holy Spirit, which is given to all of us freely, which is in each and every breath that we take. And those whose lives are being bent towards God, 
we also lift others in our prayers, knowing that the power is not in us, but in God. So we pray for others because our prayers for others is an act of love for others. Prayer is not an abdication of our responsibility to act in this world. It never has been. Because we have been commanded to go out into the world and do as Jesus did. To offer food and solace and healing and clothing. To visit those who are in prison. And to make disciples of all nations. We don't just pray for our own healings. We don't just pray for others' healings. We pray for God's will to be done. We look at the fact that he prayed, that he healed, that he taught, that he hung out with folks like you and me, and that he dined with everyday folks. Prayer was what he did to recharge his spiritual batteries. You can't do what Jesus did unless you begin the tasks before you with prayer, because you'll burn out. And there is no better way to prove this than to just do it. As you begin each day, and then look the way you will be surprised when you begin your life with prayer, Open your eyes and ears, as Jesus says, because you'll be filled with more than the feeling that it's just the same old, same old day all over again repeating itself, as if nothing miraculous or inspiring or special or joy-filled could find us and hap happen here for us. We were not created to be lonely. We do not go through life alone. As John Calvin wrote, prayer must not be self-centered. It arises not only because we feel the need to lift up our personal burdens to God, but also because we come to realize that we are so bound up with everyone else on this planet that we feel their need as acutely as our own because we can put ourselves in their shoes because we all share a common humanity. We all bleed red. We all need air. Thus, as Christ has prayed for us, so we pray for one another. In the midst of a hostile world, we do pray for jobs that are fulfilling. We do pray for healings from disease and disaster and for courage to speak the truth to powerful people and to powerful institutions. We pray so that God's will and kingdom be done and not our will be done, not that our kingdoms be built. We pray for what people ask us to pray for, for them, because that is what love does. It looks out for the interests of the other, it seeks the welfare of all of God's children who have been created in the divine image. Not just Christians, but everybody. Muslims, Jews, atheists, Buddhists, name it. They're human beings. We all share this. And so did Jesus share this common humanity. And so we model our prayers on the way that Jesus taught us to pray, which reminds us that our prayers are about so much more than just today's needs. They are also about a future still to come for a kingdom to come where there will be no more suffering, no more crying, no more pain, and no more death anymore. For as John said, these, the former things, they are passing away. And he who sat upon that divine throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said, Write these words, for they are trustworthy and they are true. And so it is our choice to believe in these words, to know that thoughts and prayers do make a difference that they are not useless in this day and age, that they, in fact, are the foundation of all of our actions to help and love one another. So today, I ask, what are you praying for? The time for action is now. The time for sacrifice and self-sacrifice will come to all of us at some point. So pray for one another today. Be kind and be gentle with yourselves and with others. Remember, your life is a blessing, folks. Now make your life a blessing for all those that you meet. Amen. At this time, I'd like to put on a hymn by our choir called Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Great job, choir. Wonderful. At this time, we do the very thing that I just spoke about in my sermon. We lift up our prayers for one another. So at this time, I invite you to lift up any prayers that you would have and want us to care for. I appreciate the thoughts that are coming in. Thank you so much here from Karen. Just wanted to say powerful message. Thank you, Rev. Steve. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate that. It's always nice to hear compliments, but it's also nice to know that you're all there for me. It feels like we're still a community even though we're over the internet, and we will be coming back in person, folks. Not to worry. That will happen. Prayers for this country to be free of hate and vulnerability. Also for Anita, who is having a cancerous tumor removed again. We'll keep Anita in our prayers. Absolutely, Diane. Thank you. Anita, if you're watching us, it comes out to you that we're all lifting you up in prayer, kiddo, and your sister Judy. We hope you're well and with us. Anybody else have a prayer they'd like to lift up at this time? And while those might be coming online, let me just offer up a prayer of thanksgiving. Oh, thanks, John. Um, prayer of remembrance for Walter Lang and for his wife, Artie, on the loss of Walter. They were married for 72 years, and he passed away on March 28th, I believe it was, uh, or the 27th. But um, thanks, John. Also, let's see, we've got uh, Sophie coming on here. Let's put Sophie up. Um, thank you, Steve. What an encouraging sermon. Yes, we are all in need of prayer. Thanks, Sophie. Um, and Charlie, let's see here. Thanks, buddy. Charlie writes, uh, continued prayers for my brother, myself, and to your daughter's new baby. Thank you, Charlie. We're going to be celebrating Rachel's um, baby shower today at one o'clock via Zoom uh, from all over the country, um, which is very cool. Um, prayers as we move, KB says, prayers as we move from laments to hope. I agree. There's a lot to be thankful for, even though um, there is a lot to be sad about, too. Prayers for almost grandparents. Thanks, Diane. I appreciate it. I can't wait to be a grandfather. I'm looking forward to having a wee one in my midst that I can spoil terribly and do all the things that I wasn't able to do as a parent because I was more nervous when I was raising my own. As a grandparent, you know you can always give them back to the mom and dad so you can have the fun of being their big teddy bear. I look forward to it. Susan um, Herman writes, continued prayers for my healing, strengthening after my hospitalization. I know that she had been in the hospital for, um, a, defib for a heart arrhythmia, I believe it was, if I got that right, Susan. And we're just grateful that you're out of the hospital and that you're doing well. Give our love to Mark, too. Dear friend, going back all the way 30-some years now, more than that, going back to 1980. So just, just thanks to all you guys for tuning in. Prayers to all from Barbara Thomas. She lifts up. I um, want to thank the guys again for coming over for brunch and breakfast yesterday. It was wonderful to have uh, a chance to be gathered with um, friends and, 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 and the Bay family here. Uh, we had smoked salmon and capers and bagels and cream cheese. And Bobby brought uh, Krispy Kreme donuts, which were wonderful. And uh, we had OJ and all kinds of good stuff. So thanks to everybody. I know the ladies have gathered for the Women's Fellowship and are having a good time. And we'll continue to get together, guys, even though the sanctuary is not quite done. We will be there um, and uh, we'll we'll get you back. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> Sophie says you get to spoil them. Exactly, Sophie. I'm looking forward to that. That's true. Well, it looks like that may be all of the prayers that are coming in today. Wait a minute. Prayers for Denise. Let's put this up. Yeah, Denise. Thanks, kiddo. Um, I want to pray for her. And Donnie puts up this. This is the weekend of baby showers. Prayers for Megan, who is Aaron's best friend from high school days. Yesterday, um, my daughter Aaron and my wife Dottie were over helping uh, Megan uh, and Fallon with their baby shower. And uh, they're in River Edge, just the town next to it. So it was great. Um, a prayer for those who are wrestling with big decisions. Yeah, because we know that uh, uh, any decision, whether it's about getting married or having a child or moving, uh, which our daughter Erin is doing tomorrow into a new place, um, are fraught with anxiety, even if they're um, great things that are happening. Um, anxiety and stress comes with us even when joy is coming to us too. So let's just keep everybody who's got to make a big decision in prayer. All right. Uh, thanks, Kirk. Appreciate that, man. And uh, I think that's about it right here, guys. So let us uh, now come to God in prayer with these concerns that we have lifted up in prayers. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the dawning of each new day. 
You have done so much for us, and you keep on blessing all of us. Let us make the best of each and every day to clear our minds so that we can hear from you, to clear away the conceptions that we have of how the world should unfold, and yet open our eyes and ears to the way it truly unfolds, the way you call us to be involved in it. Let me not whine and whimper over things that I have no control over. Rather, grant me the wisdom to accept that which I cannot change and to trust that you are involved in all change and give me the best response when I'm pushed beyond my limits and stressed and snap or, or get snarky or bark at family and friends. I know that when I can't pray, you do, in fact, listen to my heart. You listen to my sighs. You listen to every breath I take. Continue to use me and to use this congregation to do your will. In the words of our Lord, who taught us his prayer to say together as a community of faith, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This time I want to say thank you again to everybody who uh, contributes to the ministry of our church. We are bringing in... My hope is be it. Absolutely. A reaffirmation of faith comes from Ted Loder, a Methodist minister whose words are like poetry. They are poetry, and they're beautiful. Let us join together in this. We praise you, O glorious one, for this curious day, for the impulses that have designed it and designated it, for the gifts that grace it, for the gladness that accompanies it, for my life, for your life, for those whom I came to be, from my family and friends, through whom I hear and see greater worlds than I otherwise would, for all the doors of words and music and worship through which I pass to larger worlds than my own, and for the one who brought a kingdom to me and to you. Amen. Our closing hymn is This Little Light of Mine. Enjoy. This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine oh, This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine oh, This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Beautiful job, choir. Our benediction goes like this. Prayer is a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with God. It can be heated or it can be sweet. It can be long or short. It can be the most eloquent speech you've ever uttered or a rambling mess. It can be no words at all, 
than just size. It can be a smile. It can be hot, stinging tears. Prayer is a heart-to-heart -heart with God. It can be anything that you think or utter. There is no right or wrong way to talk to God. But talk to God is what we must all do. All God desires for us is that the path of communication be opened, no matter what we send down that path. No holding back. No trying to just use the right words. Just turn to God and let God know where you are right now and how you are feeling and what you are seeking. And let God do the rest in your life, even when there is nothing but silence on the other end. Amen. Our postlude comes from Simona. It is, I walked with God. And this will take us out of our service today. We hope to see you at coffee hour and at Sunday school following. Enjoy. Oops, sorry, guys. Here we go. you all for joining us at this worship time. Look forward to seeing you. May God bless you and keep you this day. May God lift up his face and make it shine upon you and his countenance. And may you go out now and be a blessing to others. Amen. We'll see you folks. <laughs>